Hello, Brian. Welcome Hello. to the Protect Accent interview. Um, your time is very much valued and thank you for granting us this opportunity um, to gain at least some insight into your lived experience as um, a lecturer in the UK. Thank you very much. Right then, let's kick start this. Can you please introduce yourself? Who is Mr. Brian Chaka? So my name is Brian. I am uh, a radiographer by background. I am currently a lecturer at, uh, at radiography school in at Bradford University. Fantastic and welcome to the interview. So it's the Protect um, Accent interview, a project that we are running um, to provide a platform really for accent to be included um, in, in our daily lives, lived experiences at work in the society. Um, so we are interviewing people to find out what it is like to live with accents in their various workplaces. So um, the topic we are going to talk about this morning is accentism in the academic institution. Now, before I, I move forward, I'd like to, I know you understand about for the benefits of anybody that will be listening to this interview, I'd like to define what we mean by ascentism. So what is ascentism? Ascentism is discrimination based on individual's accent. So people have been discriminated, stereotyped, or biased, or experiencing biases because of their accents. And it's not been a very a pleasant experience for some people. And we acknowledge that um, for the sake of balancing the argument, um, that everybody is not going through the same experience. And so we have uh, invited you to this interview this morning so as to um, gain some insights into your lived experience as somebody who is. Um, very resourceful, thriving, um, how be it speak English very fluently with clarity, but because you were not born and raised in the UK, obviously your accent comes into play. You can help that it's part of your identity. So we want to find out what your lived experience is. So the first question will be, um, does your accent in any way mitigate or impact on the quality of your lecture delivery? That it does your accent, um, do you see your accent as a hindrance to the quality of the lecture you deliver in the class? Do your students understand you clearly? Um, have anybody ever um, sort of complained that your accent is getting in the way of them, uh, of, of them or him or her maximizing um, the benefits of the lecture? Yeah, I mean, my accent is never has never had a detrimental effect to the delivery of uh, of my lectures, uh, simply based on the approach that I have uh, taken to to address it. I am fully conscious that um, some people might find it challenging to understand some of the words that I might want to express based on my accent. So my approach has always been to begin with uh, by acknowledging where I'm from um, and that tends to allay any sort of reservations the students might have uh, based on my accent and uh, in, in, in most cases it has been embraced as a way of uh, diversity and inclus inclusivity. So I, I, I would I would want to acknowledge, but at the same time, I also am aware of the fact that I might not necessarily be understood by everyone. And um, you know, there have been instances, particularly from not not from students, but from my children, <laughs> who <laughs> I've had to explain one or two things twice for them yeah. to to understand what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. So. so I, so I've never had a negative, uh, uh, you know, detrimental effect to, to my accent. Fantastic. Um, um, I'm quite happy that you clearly pointed out there that speaking with an accent 
has never had any detrimental effect on the quality of your lecture delivery and that your students embrace it. Number one, you are acknowledging. Yeah. Um, I don't know how, how you sort of do that. Do you come into the class and say, oh, first of all, I've got an accent, um, I'm an African, and you know that sort of um, puts things into perspective and people sort of expect you to speak with an accent and then you buy their goodwill, if you like, um, to pay you attention and get the most from the lecture. How do you sort of, um, I don't know, how do you prepare the ground for your lecture in terms of your accent? Well, first and foremost, uh, I, I, my approach is always to of that of storytelling, and uh, because we want to stimulate their their engagement. And um, first and foremost, I am Brian, and uh, I my origin is from Africa, and uh, I want to tell that story to everyone that I come into because I believe that identifies me irrespective of the fact that I'm a radiographer but ultimately the first thing that I identify with is, is being African and um, as part of my my approach I, I want to tell that story and uh, and uh, more than more than once it has been embraced um, because I, I pay respect to it and Ultimately, the students they they tend to, to to like it if I tell it. So I so in a in a typical lecture, I will try by all means to to relate to to that African uh, uh, sort of origin. Uh, as you can assume, we our discipline is part of the healthcare sector, so we 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 also have. To acknowledge the fact that some of the patients that we come into contact with uh, are of African origin, and uh, the NHS and many uh, the health uh, health sector in the United Kingdom is a big proponent of, of the fact that the people that that uh, should should be working within that sector should be representative of the people that they they look after. So 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 you know. In, a, in their daily lives, they will meet people like myself. So, yeah, so that's how I tell my story. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Um, quite a lot you've um, that you've explained there. And um, to the conclusion of it all, basically, is that your accent does not in any way impact on the quality of your lecture delivery. Because when we say, um, when we talk about ascentism, the burden of um, interlocution is not only on the listener so what i mean by that is that the, the whole body of the communication is a two-way process it's not on the listener to just like try and understand you we also have as a center speakers we have a responsibility to speak with clarity mm. and make sure that we are being understood in as much as we want um, um the native speakers to understand us and accept us for who we are and that our accent is part of our identity we also have that responsibility um, to speak with clarity and actually make sure that we are being understood how be it without denying our accent mm. thank you very much for that um the second question is i mean i know you've touched a little bit on, on that but can you take us deeper into your lived experience um, as an center speaker who is from Africa and who lectures in a tertiary institution um, in the UK. You've touched a little bit on that, but have you had stories of maybe your colleagues that have they complained that oh, their accent is a problem? You know, have you had any stories like that? Or what is your personal lived experience? I personally haven't had any sort of negative connotations regarding my accent. Um, if anything, they have told me they've taught me to to embrace that that diversity that comes with uh, with my accent. Yeah. Um, they a, a part of me wishes I was I had a deeper African accent <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, because you know I, I've I've I think I've lived in the UK 
pay for quite a number of years. And uh, uh, it's almost as if I'm becoming acclimatized to how the natives speak. And uh, therefore, there's an element of dilution. <laughs> but but the, the honest truth is that I've never I've never um, I've never had any problems with it. And I, I would be lying to you if I say to you that I don't subconsciously think about it. But I've noticed that the more I think about it, the more I uh, I tend to struggle, whether it's delivery or trying to relay my point across. Um, you know, you're always aware that there will be some people who will struggle to understand what you're trying to relay. But overally, I don't think it's has been an impediment of as such. Oh, fantastic, yes. fantastic. And is this um, sort of your experience, if you like, that we want to model throughout the tertiary institutions in the UK? Um, I mean, that, that is why I brought you on, because you have a different experience to other people. I have uh, had issues with accents where people would intentionally mock my accent. Not that they don't understand me, but they just mock my accent to put me in place. You know, it's a form of discrimination, as a form of uh, stereotyping me. But I wanted to balance this argument to show to the viewers that, look, it's not everybody that's actually experiencing the negative um, side of speaking with accents. And you are a prime example of that. And thank God, and very hands up to the institution that you work for. They've embraced you, they've embraced your accent. Your, your students have not complained, which means they are getting the most out of the lecture and they are thriving irrespective of your accent. And that speaks to volume that your accent does not in any way mitigate your, your lectures. It does not mitigate the quality of your lectures and it's, it's just who you are. And you've made that conscious effort to speak with clarity and prepare the background, if you like, for so that people can embrace you, uh, you know, your accent. So that is quite good. And I want to ask you the final question, Brian, before we wrap this up. How can we model this, your experience? throughout the tertiary institutions in the UK, how do we proliferate your positive experience so that other lecturers that are suffering from ascentism can borrow a leaf uh, and even other institutions can um, borrow a leaf uh, from the way you have been embraced by your institution um, to deliver the quality lecture that you do? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's a very difficult uh, question to, to answer, or if not to generalize, uh, because um, it just because my lived experience has been positive, you know, we can't then uh, extrapolate that to mean everyone else is going to live that experience. But, yeah. I, uh, but I, I, I suppose we, we all have to come with a bit of... Uh, um, superiority in, in in the sense that if you identify yourself as an African, then that must be it, and uh, uh, nothing should be put in place to try to discredit your identity in that respect. So I think the honest lies with with uh, with, uh, for lack of a better word, the victim of of, of accentism in the sense that. Uh, you know, if you acknowledge that it is who you are, uh, then the onus should be on the listener to maybe uh, try to, to understand you better, if not learn your language so that they can understand you better. I'm a firm believer that if you walk into a room full of racists, they have the problem because they are the ones who have to worry about where you're going to sit, because if you sit next to them, then they have a problem. So. <laughs> I I am a firm believer that, you know, it's not a burden, it's not a problem, as other people would want to make us think. I, I think it is it, it is who you are. If anything, it provides a platform for, for other people to embrace diversity. Uh, if anything, to learn the languages that we, we bring to the table, I think. 
Thank you for that, Brian. I like um, the fact that you mentioned that it provides the opportunity for people to embrace um, diversity. It also provides the platform for intercultural communication. Absolutely. Diversity is, is a beautiful thing. Um, it's also an icebreaker, you know. Um, on the positive side, I have people say, oh, where, where do you come from? You know, not in a negative tone, but they are genuinely interested in finding out your background. So our accent has a lot of benefit and language in general is very beneficial. And there are studies out there that show that the UK in particular is suffering a deficit or has a deficit in the economy due to um, a lack of linguistic diversity. And I think it's time that the UK embrace the rich reserve of the cultural diversity that they have and use that to leverage you know, the economy. And on that note, uh, we're going to wrap up this interview. W once again, thank you for your time and thank you for granting us this interview. It is very much appreciated. Um, thank you. Uh, bye.